Hi guys to everyone, today we are with Air Morbid from uh, Italian uh, huge band Forgotten Tom. Hi Air Morbid, first of all, how are you? Hey, how are you doing? I'm pretty good actually, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm the same, I'm pretty good since we have this strange and bad situation. I want to start uh, with, um, of course, um, the most common question to just introducing uh, Forgotten Tom and Delena. Well, uh, the band was born in '99 as a woman band. I was actually the, the founding member, and um, uh, I uh, I stayed as a woman band for uh, uh, at least uh, up to 2003. Uh, and then uh, other people joined the lineup, uh, especially for the live shows. Yeah. Uh, and we changed uh, a few members over the years, but uh, uh, the drummer and the bass player are pretty much the same since the beginning. Uh, so we, we have been playing together uh, since, yeah, 2003, 2004. Uh, Almost 20 years. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of time by now, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and we changed the guitar player uh, in 2011. Uh, we got the, another guitar player. The, it was Andrea from Whiskey Ritual. Uh, he stayed with us for five or six years, and then uh, we had to change it again because uh, he had some personal issues. <laughs> Therefore, now we have um, we, we change a few session members. Uh, now we have uh, this guy from Kotza. It's a Swiss band, oh. uh, Swiss black metal band, and uh, it's very good uh, guitar player and cool guy. He's a young guy. He's like <laughs> well, half of our age probably, but <laughs> it works. It feels, it feels yeah. like a, a, like you are like a, the great uncle or like a, the father of. <laughs> We kind of uh, we have to keep an eye on him, you know. When, <laughs> <laughs> when we try, he, he can drink. So he can drink more than that. he can. Uh, he can. Um, I can say he can uh, uh, have uh, you know you know in his body more drink, more beer than the others. Yeah, because with the age you are not uh, able to keep beers and alcohol as yeah, when you were well, younger. He's a is a very good guitar player, and he fit uh, well. Into the the band, you know. Band. And it is. Uh, we have to speak in English the the whole time because he's from. Uh, With him, yeah, it's from Switzerland. Yeah. Switzerland, so you know. <laughs> yeah. But, so uh, but yeah, it was it was a good choice, and uh, uh, we played uh, uh, several shows already. It's working great, and now <laughs> unfortunately we can't play, but uh, we are waiting to for. Of course. Yeah. Like a, like you said in the in the in introduction, um, as as the beginning, you were just like one man band. Yeah. Why did you choose to form a band, a yeah. and not staying just one man band? Well, uh, before Forgotten Two, I was uh, singing for a couple of demo bands in the nineties, mm -hmm. around ninety seven, ninety eight. Uh, one of these bands was Sacrater. Uh, which was like a occult black metal band. Occult, yeah. and, uh, the problem was that the band imploded at a certain point, so uh, I was faced uh, with, uh, you know, a situation where I had to find uh, other people to form a, a new band of my own. Yes, yes. So it was that uh, back in those days, you know, especially in my city, which is a small city, and uh, there. I'm there you know, back in the end of the 90s, there wasn't really uh, people listening to or, or even playing black metal, you know. Yeah. So, since I could pretty much play all the instruments, uh, I was like, uh, okay, fuck it, I will just uh, do it by myself, you know, well, like uh, the Burzum way, you know. The, the, the Burzum, <laughs> you can so, do like a Burzum, Italian Burzum, but without, yeah. uh, without you know, other issues. It, it was, yeah, of course. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> In this case, it was uh, more. Um, it, it was more common to have uh, one yeah. man in black metal compared to these days. So it, it wasn't uh, too strange um, back in '99. And uh, but my plan was maybe afterwards to find a full lineup for live shows, and that's yeah. what I did actually in the years uh, following the 
uh, the formation of the band, yeah. Yes, sure. And now speaking about um, Songs to Live, it's considered like, uh, we can say, a pillar of the depressive suicidal black metal. What do you think about that? Well, I'm flattered, uh, you know, from this kind of opinion, which is uh, uh, pretty common, I, I think. And uh, I think it's, it's true in a way, because we were among the originators of this kind of style. Uh, yeah, together. sure. And full of bands, because really nobody back in those days was playing this kind of stuff. And the term, mm -hmm. which which we use today, you know, the SBM, you know, the, the old yeah. uh, suicidal black metal tag, uh, it didn't exist back in those days. So yeah. uh, I was among the first to, to, to say that I was playing this uh, depressive black metal uh, and stuff like that. And uh, musically, obviously, we, we were... Uh, very different from from the band uh, from the bands uh, of those times because uh, most of most bands back then were still trying to imitate uh, Marduk or uh, Immortal uh, this mm. kind of fast uh, uh, black metal and uh, when I did the first album Songs to Live uh, it was very slow and brooding and. Uh, depressive, of course. Uh, it had a lot of atmosphere and different lyrics, different mm -hmm. image, you know. Uh, so it was, it was something new. You know, we were just yeah. um, like five or six bands, maybe worldwide, <laughs> trying to do that. So. And this is, this is not easy when there are, you know, um, like an existing genre bring new, uh, yeah, new evolving. It's like, for example, in that metal, what could you bring new in that metal? That melodic death metal is terrible. That metal is not easy to bring something new and that people could like it. Of course, it could be something for uh, people, uh, for a small circle of people that can understand your message and especially this type of uh, music. Of course, because of course, it, it's deep, it has a deep meaning. Yeah, also back then it, it was really unfashionable, you know, compared to to these days. You know, these days you've got like uh, thousands of uh, depressive suicidal black metal yeah. bands, pretty much uh, all doing the same things. You know, same image. You know, uh, same yeah. theme, same music. But, yeah. Back in the, days, uh, the the old guard, they were like. What the fuck are these guys doing? You know, like uh, what's this shit? You know, uh, like like, they, like like the emo version of black metal. No, this is not black metal. You know, and now it's like one of the biggest trends in black metal. So yes, yes, of course. I kind of created created a monster, I guess, or something. And like and, that. and 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 the the most important thing is something that we as Italian did it. Because yeah. many yeah. genres were invented in Florida, in, 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 in I don't know, in Sweden, in the region, but so, something you did it for us as Italy, as country. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. thank you. I mean, we can be proud of something. And yeah. uh, at, the, at the time, like we were saying before, uh, the band that was given birth uh, with this genre were shining. What do you think about this band? You'll yeah. have the chance to play with them or just meeting them. Uh, the fact with Shining is that uh, our, we met them uh, early on because um, the singer Nicholas uh, he had this uh, small label back in the days, which yeah. was called Small Services, and uh, I had a fanzine back in those days, and uh, we were, you know. Um, getting in touch uh, because of the uh, releases he was um, uh, doing with his label and mm -hmm. he heard of my band uh, I sent him a promo a promo CD back in those days and uh, he was like what the hell this is great I absolutely want to release it on my label so really? you know, I started from there and we called each other on the phone and uh, it was like uh, you know we found out we had a lot of uh, things in common uh, when it comes to you know musical taste and uh, ideas about uh, the attitude that this kind of stuff should have you know and uh, it, it was built from there so afterwards he visited me in Italy in uh, 2001 I think he was like 18 <laughs> back in the past he was actually younger than me 
uh, of three years and um, we spent some time together uh, you know also the, the singer from Kraft was there too he mm -hmm. came along during the trip and uh, we've been uh, you know uh, exchanging ideas and stuff back and forth and uh, I went to Sweden afterwards for a while uh, so it we started this collaboration both with the label yeah. and with and so yeah in the beginning uh, we had common goals uh, I also, yeah. also actually back in those days I also had um, like an Italian uh, division of Salzmore services so I was uh, helping distribute the label yeah. release Italy you know and um, so it was great. Uh, it was a bunch of great years. I met a lot of people also in Sweden, all the guys from Vatain, uh, old okay. old set of bands that were um, uh, blooming back then, you know. And then uh, we had some sort of uh, falling out uh, at a certain point. Uh, and yeah, we, we, we happened to play together from time to time, you know, like on the same festivals yeah. and stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, like um, something more like uh, everybody does his own thing, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah, of course. Uh, uh, everybody is a, a way of playing, you can say. Yeah, uh, you know, I think that both the bands started de developing pretty fast in those days. And, um, you know, it's like, uh, like in every other genre, you know, uh, I, I wouldn't say, I don't know, it, it's just uh, everybody takes his own path, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. And uh, also, um, the, um, I mean, this particular genre that you we can say, you created, there, there is something that inspired you to go in that the, in this direction of the this depressive suicidal blood yeah. matter? I think uh, the main reason uh, were two in the beginning. Uh, the first one was a strictly uh, musical one, and uh, mm -hmm. it was that uh, even if if, if uh, you know the, the faster black metal style style was still uh, fashionable back in the yeah. end of, uh, I grew uh, bored of it pretty fast. So I was like uh, more influenced by bands like uh, Manus or uh, Burzum, uh, Street, um, Bethlehem, this kind of stuff, you know. Yeah. The, uh, Thorns was a band which influenced me a lot in the beginning. Uh, and so I, I was like, okay, there isn't any band uh, at the moment playing this, this uh, more dissonant, uh, slower stuff, you know, sinister yeah. stuff. Uh, everybody wanted to be fast and talk about war and all the Satan and woods. And yes, the... yes. So I was like, I want something more dangerous, something uh, more uh, sinister, you know. And this was yep. the, the, the main reason, musically. And the other reason, um, conceptually, was that uh, uh, back in those days I was quite a... Uh, uh quite a depressed uh person yeah. i think so um i couldn't sing about war or this kind of stuff no i, I understand completely yeah sing about uh stuff that was closer to uh my heart and to my everyday life and this yeah. this made difference because uh, no bands were singing about uh, uh urban stuff you know everyday stuff uh, like living yeah. in the sea traveling uh, you yeah. had, you know, so that was another catalyst, uh, that yeah. kind of image, you know. Yes, because especially in that, that genre that are like, uh, I'm going to say, focus, uh, you play that, you play, you play thrash metal, you speak about war, you play that metal, you speak about destruction, you play black yeah. metal, you speak about sat satanism or occult, but when you just put it something that is more deeply and more especially um, that as something like the, that we can say this is also a problem that most of people have in the world because nobody say it but I think that the most of the population suffer of uh, even a, a small depression is a uh, uh, is all the time between us because we have to struggle all the days and put this into the into 
a lyrics of course you have to be slower because it could be it can't be faster and uh, it's, it's 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 even better because it's a it's a way for example for people that are struggling some period listening to one of your song on other song of uh, this uh, genre of black metal and just say I'm not alone also other people are going through this I'll tell you this uh, about this this topic uh, there is something that uh, you know back in those days especially uh, and this was something also that we had in, in common with uh, uh, with Nicholas from Shining yeah. was uh, um, we didn't want to help people with our music. We actually wanted to make it worse. <laughs> it can sound uh, uh, crude, but uh, that's what we tried to do uh, back in those days. Yeah. It was part of uh, uh, suicidal propaganda or something like that. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And th this was part of the eeriness of what we were doing, you know, like. Uh, making black metal dangerous again you know back in the day because all the other bands were kind of cliched you know so we yeah, were trying true. to um, uh, more yeah i'd say evil but it's a term that uh, <laughs> uh, you know, i don't like that much these days because yeah, well, it sounds not... a bit childish but uh, yeah of course uh, no nah, man it's not a problem i mean you can use that as much as you want I mean, but you 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 started like with uh, with uh, this uh, depressed suicidal mode, we can say. But uh, with the time, you just had more like influenced from from classical black metal that you can hear you that you can hear uh, clearly from the first album to the last one. How 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 I mean how how it happened? It was a choice. It just was happened like just composing without no reason yeah, as i said of course uh, when i i mean i grew up um, in the as a teenager in the 90s so mm -hmm. uh, of course uh, i lived the the whole black metal thing you know at the yeah. pool. Uh, so i saw the release of all the now classic albums and stuff mm -hmm. like that of course i was influenced by the scandinavian scene uh, and also some of the uh, other European bands, but uh, uh, so of course in the beginning I, I was playing a more um, uh, classic black metal style with with yeah. my own uh, sacrator. Uh, but then, as I said earlier, uh, I grew tired of it. So mm -hmm. uh, I was like, let's do something more uh, sinister, you know, more. Yeah, I was. I you know I always. If you if you think about Mayhem and Burzum, you know, I I, I, I absolutely loved uh, the mysterious Dom Satanas back in those yeah. days, like in the middle of the nineties. But Burzum uh, musically, uh, he he felt uh, you know, uh, you know to what, uh, uh, I there is something. I hear something. You hear me? No, it's okay. Yeah. okay. It was another voice. <laughs> Maybe you hear your own. No, it's okay. It's okay. So you you just felt more closer, like the way of uh, composing of Burton. Yeah, I think uh, it, you know the melancholy of the music felt. Uh, yeah, but of, uh, of of course, one thing that I like about about it's him to what I wanted to achieve, you know. Yeah, but of so course, uh, that sparked the the change in my the, in the way I, I yeah. wanted to write music, I guess. Yeah. And that's one thing that I like about Burzum is that uh, um, no, a part of, of what happened that we all knew what happened is that he's playing today, right now, he's composing with uh, nothing basically because uh, he's barely have some money to just living and just he keep on composing his own music just by his own, like a really one man band. And he's doing these things by his own with, with his idea and uh, auto producing it himself. And I think it's a good thing to do it instead of having a great production, like, uh, you know, like, uh, for example, Mayhem, they have the huge fire, or for example, yeah, I, I don't want to speak about them too much because uh, I don't even know if they are black metal or not, be, be, behemoths, that uh, they are maybe 
I put a punch in the eyes for people who really live black metal because sometimes I saw him with leggings that up, I mean <laughs> it's, it's better just we stay speak but uh, there are people that truly live it that I mean uh, they their 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 style because it's not only the music you listen you feel it that way of living that music became your own soul yeah all of 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 vice versa as, as in italian vice versa in the opposite way and also um i mean um looking right now so today with the, your eyes of today with your mind of today if uh, uh, of course an experience what do you think about your first works um uh, Song, um, songs to live a springtime depression you will change something in those albums uh, I pretty much like a springtime depression uh, I think it was uh, an improvement on songs to live but uh, you know within the fan base there is always this um, <laughs> uh, like uh, I think uh, springtime depression is better no I think songs to live is better i think they were both uh, good albums, uh, especially for those days, you know, like uh, yeah. they were something new back then, something fresh. Uh, and I mixed a lot of styles because I wasn't influenced uh, from just from black metal, but I was yeah. influenced by uh, a dark wave of the 80s, like Sisters of Mercy. Uh, and then also doom metal, like uh, yeah. early Paradise Lost stuff like that so it was a, a, an interesting mix of things uh, yeah. I think that's what made those albums uh, special besides the the, the lyrical themes and the, um, the visual uh, theme also because we, we used to uh, it was different from the other black metal bands you know uh, the image that, that we had yeah. back then abandoned buildings and the, the first album with myself lying in the bathtub uh, with all the blood and stuff, you know, nobody yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, it was. Nobody yeah. was doing. Uh, back no, then. they only born in uh, churches. <laughs> this is the extreme act they did it, apart from murder. But you were doing something that it was involving other uh, other people. It, it's all like like uh, inner self. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously, you know, I was very young because uh, uh, the first album, uh, I think I recorded it when I was like uh, 19 or 20. Yeah, really, and really, yeah. It was released one year afterwards it was yeah. recorded because uh, Salzburg Services took uh, a whole year <laughs> to release it. But uh, yeah. still, I was, I was uh, uh, in my early 20s when the albums were uh, released and... Uh, uh, I will probably change some lyrics now because I think they were a little uh, naive, maybe you know, like uh, the way they were written. Uh, not not the themes, but the way they were written. Yeah, uh, the, the 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 verses, maybe some the, the structure we can say. They're good lyrics in itself, but uh, I think uh, they they don't represent me anymore. You know, like yeah. uh, I grew up from that point on. So yeah. I think the lyrics I did afterwards are a lot better. Uh, even if my lyrical themes are more or less always the same over the years, but yeah. uh, the way I, I write about those things now it's uh, a bit more mature uh, and uh, yeah. than I used to do back in those days. You know, uh, back in those days maybe uh, they sounded a little I don't know whiny or, <laughs> or something <laughs> like that. Which isn't the kind of person that 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 they uh, grew up, uh, you know, becoming. Yeah, yeah, of course. But if you have to choose, for example, um, people, of course, are um, most of the people that listen black metal or metal in in the world don't have much culture. Even myself, for example, in uh, in suicide, in the press of suicide of black metal. But if you have to suggest three album that we can say could incarnate better the soul of uh, Forgotten Tom. What okay. would they be? To suggest to someone that never listened to this genre, never. Uh, from Forgotten Tom, I'd say uh, probably 
springtime depression uh, for the early years. Mm -hmm. uh, then, uh, and Don't Deliver Us From Evil, I think it's a very good record. Uh, yeah, it depends. I mean, if you are talking about uh, my band, uh, like uh, if, if someone wants to know uh, how Zoom evolved or if it's just for the all the SBM thing. Not you know? just for you, for you. For, I, I want to know Forgotten Tom, which album I should listen to know them since it's, the beginning until today. Okay. So yeah, I'd say probably Sprint and Depression or, or Love's Burial Ground for the early days. And then I'd say And Don't Deliver Us From Evil and uh, Nihilistic Estrangement, the latest one, I think it's yeah. great. Yeah. yeah, because it's, uh, I think it's good because they just could start from the beginning and make a journey, maybe just for starting from the, from three album you suggest to them. And speaking about, of course, uh, that nowadays, scene of uh, the SBM. What do you think about that? Because, of course, you, you found that this, um, this genre 20 years ago, and of course, it changed. Maybe it changed also in some lyrics composition, in some melodies. There are, for, in, in your point of view, there are some valid band, solid band. Uh, normally, I don't really listen to what they call the SBM these days, yeah. because uh, since I was, uh, you know, among one of the uh, originators of this style, yeah. I don't really feel like listening to the clones and, and uh, all, all this yeah. kind of stuff. But uh, uh, I don't know, I'm pretty sure there there probably is some, some good band among all the bad ones, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, yeah, sure. I wouldn't know what you su suggest because uh, yeah, uh, sure. I don't really uh, listen to the, yes the... of course because you already uh, found that like with, you, you made an evolution of uh, a huge genre that is black metal that it's like for example uh, another for I don't know that that core for example what 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 I mean if I, I'm interviewing someone if you see that that core scene it, that there isn't another one because all are the same from the founder. Yeah. It's yeah. like, for example, that metal. If you see that that metal band from today, they are all the same of the past. Because, but in black metal, you see some, you know, just some, uh, uh, we can say more interesting. I don't want to say more this, uh, because in that metal, uh, the the the, the subgenre are are not like the other type of, of music of metal. Are more commercial, more crossover things that I really don't like it, especially for some Italian bands that we had in the past, <laughs> in the past, like for example, I don't know if you remember Lineal 77, yeah. back in the days, they were yeah. great as a band, um, but apart from that, uh, for example, in, in Black Metal, there is a, if you change your region to region, they change it as well, for example, because in France, there is this, this uh, I think it's called Le, Le, Le Jean Noir, with the Peste Noir, Bez Mahash. They are, of course, we can say like extremists, like too much. But uh, there are this new evolution. But it sounds always like the original black metal. So you you found you find uh, you found out a new evolution, but. The, the other band can find out another evolution of uh, the SBM. What is the other evolution? They put the organ? <laughs> well, you know, uh, I mean, it would be good. We evolved, like, as a band. Yeah, uh, of course. Uh, years, yeah. That's what, uh, that's what I find a little upset, upsetting uh, about the new bands, is that they're trying to play stuff that I did 20 years ago, you know, yeah. like, we evolved. We did uh, a lot of other stuff. We mix. Uh, we mix cars. You know, like uh, let's see what we can come up with. So there's a lot yeah. of you know in our uh, music uh, these days. But still, it sounds like Forgotten Tomb. You know, like uh, you still yeah. have uh, um, those elements from your um, past. But these yeah. these new bands, you know, uh, 
what I what I dislike about this uh, uh, nowadays scene, mm -hmm. not just uh, in black metal but in general, is that uh, the younger bands they don't try to um, play something uh, of their own. You know, they yeah. just imitate what they their idol, yeah. And especially when you didn't leave a certain um, lapse in time, like it was uh, black metal or death metal of the 90s, you know, yeah. early 90s, uh, it doesn't make much sense uh, trying to replicate something that uh, you didn't even leave, you know, like uh, yeah. most of the guys weren't even born or they were born uh, like uh, in those years, you know, when, when the black metal scene was at its peak. So, yeah. You can try to imitate it, but uh, you don't know the, uh, how it was to live through it, you know. So yeah. uh, it doesn't make much sense to me uh, to to imitate something uh, in the first place, and especially if you didn't even uh, live through those years, you know, like uh, yeah, okay, try yeah. the influence and do something new, like uh, I yeah. don't know, yeah, some yeah. bands. Trying to, but uh, Good, yeah, I don't but know if maybe, it's or not. <laughs> yeah, but of course it's not easy because maybe there are underground bands in the in the world that are trying to do it, and it's hard, especially for people that living in small cities, um, and especially for people living in Italy because we know how how hard it is in Italy to get out of this country and be successful in the world because we. <laughs> It's really hard, and uh, this is why what I, um, the following question, what I was, what, what I want to ask you is, what do you think about the Italian music scene? Not only just black metal, that metal, just general black music scene. Uh, it's um, it's a difficult. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course. I think it improved a lot compared to the old days because mm -hmm. uh, you know there is a lot more bands, but also the quality increased. Like uh, especially uh, younger mu musicians are way better now. You know, at their instruments, yeah. and, uh, they know how to record albums and stuff. Uh, they are more advanced, I would say, compared to how we were back in the 90s or before, I suppose. And um, but at the same time, uh, as I said before, there is a bit of a lack of uh, identity, like a personality, you know, like uh, uh, formally they are very good, like uh, very yeah. good musicians, uh, they try to yeah. be professional, uh, but at the same time the music uh, is yeah. not very interesting, at least yeah. to me. Maybe mm -hmm. I, I, I'm starting to be uh, an old fuck or whatever, but... <laughs> Yeah, Still. it's something that happened. That happened also <clears throat> because, as you can see, you are from the. I, I don't want to say from probably the north, like the middle north, <laughs> no Italy, because people will think that you are from uh, uh, Scandinavia and I'm from Africa, <laughs> and I'm from the south of Italy. This uh, north and south Italy had uh, like we can say the most um, uh, valid music. Scene. Most um, and Rome as well because as a, even Rome has a huge band in the um, metal music scene. But from the extreme genre, we had the biggest band. Uh, but of course, I th I see right now today kids kids teenager that they just start not maybe from the roots. They just start to go deep in uh, that metal, brutal brutal that metal, and it's. Yeah. And this is sad because we had a really beautiful people here in Sicily, for example, it was like 10, 10 or 13 years ago when we had uh, like for, because we have, uh, I, I probably you should, you, you know this, we have uh, here um, the temple of, uh, Tele, the, the Abbey of Telema, of Alessio Crowley. So we have uh, like here in Sicily, like a sort of occultism way of yeah. thinking. And uh, there was this uh, black metal scene here that was amazing. We had uh, this, uh, uh, like I said to you before, Incubato that singing in a Sicilian black metal. Also, we had uh, band that speak, that speak about Sicilian history in the black metal. And then from nowadays, everything was disappeared. We had a really solid band that, and what did all this band? They go to the north of Italy. 
these people. They just go to the north of Italy because here was really tough to play because you just see you you, you just see thirty people at some gigs and uh, the other day the same people at another gigs because it's a small circle. But yeah, in, yeah. in the north, in the north, we're, we're different. For example, one guy that comes into the north, he came. To, I don't know if you don't know the band Blasphemer. Yeah. Uh, he, he was the bas the singer of Blasphemer, so he just go to a black metal hero to another huge band in the north. It's like yeah. the work. If you don't find the work in season, you just go into the north to find some work. Yeah, that's a pity. Yeah. He also had the yeah. Schizo, which was a Schizo. great band. Yeah, I, I yes, love it. Yeah, as well. Yeah, yes. And but also... It was difficult, especially back in the days, uh, uh, if you lived uh, in Sicily to, you know, reach uh, yeah. uh, the European scene and stuff. But still, you know, uh, it was difficult for everybody actually because yeah. uh, Italy wasn't really on the map back in the days. Yeah. And, uh, uh, so even for us, uh, you know, uh, we we just uh, we had this sort of career, if you want, uh, because uh, because the music was good, you know. But uh, still, uh, it, was, it was different. Yeah. Yeah, from from the city I came from, you know, uh, I could have lived in Sicily and it wouldn't have made any difference, you know, because uh, yeah, you know, there's anybody uh, playing black metal around here. So yeah, you can move, of course, to Milan or whatever, but uh, yeah, uh, it, uh, I don't know. A lot of a lot of people kind of uh, probably got discouraged uh, too fast. Yeah, or, yeah, you know. yeah. This is, but I also saw that. M as you say that for for example for the new band that they are all doing the same things i saw that also people lost interest in uh, in the live music even in, in in italy we had the huge festival i mean it was famous in all the world uh, gods of metal it was fucking huge and we lost it so i think right now we are trying to do something with the i don't know there was a festival two years ago in italy a uh, castle of rock something like this we are trying yeah. to do something like this, but it's not easy because the Gods of Metal was a really good festival. And uh, what we have to do as Italian, go to Germany, go to... And that's sad because I think there are valid, really solid organization in Italy. And bigger yeah, name. It's difficult uh, because, uh, uh, you know, there is a lot of bureaucracy and stuff like yeah. that. So and eventually money. To organize uh, big events like uh, Hellfest in France, yeah. is, uh, it is not going to happen in Italy, you know. We try not, here in Sicily. Yeah, in, are you mad in Sicily? Yeah, the, the, no, no, not me. Some guys, I don't know them, they try to organize this festival in a small town of Sicily. So you can imagine a small town yeah. with the uh, mind of the 60s. Uh, the, I don't know. It was called Sicilianel or something like that, and the ch there was a, there were a thing upon that with all the band that they were playing. They invited from Italy Necrodes. So when the and but they didn't go to to play at the festival. The and it was a huge scandal because the priest the priest of the small church accused Necrodes of being satanist. And oh. said, I don't want satanism. Um, and the, the drums call me and say, What the fuck is going on with Sicily? Yeah. I mean, what the problem? And, and this, this, this is what's bad because uh, people here in Sicily are really, of course, uh, uh, support the Italian scene. And when a huge band like that didn't show up for stupid stuff, most people yeah. didn't buy tickets. So the organizer lost a lot of money. And this is one. And this is the the only one um, uh, tentative they did it because I think they are still paying the band that they are the play they because you you lost money and it's not easy here especially in Sicily and it's not easy. But speaking about now influences, first I want to ask you influences of course of for forgotten Tom musical influences. Uh, well, uh, as a band. Uh, we were influenced by the the early black metal scene uh, uh, of the 90s, uh, of course, especially those bands uh, which were nearer to um, 
to what I liked, you know, to the sinister uh, feeling mm -hmm. of the music, like uh, Manus and uh, Early Burzum uh, and uh, Street, uh, Bethlehem, uh, all these kind of bands, Thorns, yeah. uh, the, the, demo, the demo days of Thorns, all these kind of bands, as well as uh, Dark Wave of the 80s, uh, I'd say Sisters of Mercy, Early The Cure, uh, Joy Division, of course. Joy Division, yeah. Yeah, th that kind of stuff. Doom Metal, uh, especially early Paradise Lost, uh, some early Catatonia, uh, this kind of stuff, you know, but also the traditional Doom Metal, like yeah. Black uh, Sam Vidus, all this kind of stuff. These were yeah. my early influences, I, I'd say. Uh, and then you know, over the history of the band, uh, we, we try to develop all these influences. Uh, and we also add influences from the sludge metal scene, uh, yeah. from Tiana, you know, like um, Crowbar or I Hate God, uh, Buzz mm -hmm. Over, this kind of stuff, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. A really wide range of influences, but uh, I try to mix them up uh, so you don't really notice, you know. <laughs> like, yeah, uh, sure, of course. And because I if you... like another band, I want to sound like Forgotten Tomb, so yeah. I try to mix the stuff uh, and add my own spice to it. Yeah, you know? of course, of course. But as you were saying before, you you two you two read abroad a lot because you are well, you are really well known at the in all the Europe in the rest of the Europe. There is some particular moment of touring or being at gigs, some memories could be funny, sad, I don't know, or some memories that remains in your mind touring abroad, or even in Italy, I don't mean, I don't know, just touring in, in general. Uh, I think uh, 2012 was a really good year. Uh, it was uh, just before releasing and Don't Deliver Us From Evil and also after releasing it. Mm -hmm. uh, we toured for the whole year, like we started actually in 2011 and uh, we keep on, uh, kept on playing uh, during the old 2012. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All over Europe we did Hellfest, uh, the Extreme Fest in Germany and Austria. That's amazing. Uh, other festivals uh, uh, all over Europe. Uh, we did three tours uh, on a tour bus. Uh, it was great. We played like over 70 shows. So, My God, uh, I mean, yeah, that's yeah. amazing. And and uh, you know, when you're on the road, everything, every kind of things happen. So uh, it was fun, you know. It was uh, uh, it was special because uh, you meet a lot of people around, you yeah. know, uh, both famous and and not famous, you know. Yeah, uh, it's fun or band. Yeah, yeah, fans, uh, bands, you know, uh, uh, it, it was great to meet all these people and to live uh, in certain situations, you know, yeah. uh, it was crazy, you know, like also very self-destructive, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it, I mean, it, it's not easy, it's not easy doing like all these shows, in maybe in two or, th or in two months or less sometimes, and... Uh, yeah. and and just for speaking about the last questions, which are, I mean, we know how, how which is, which, are, which is the situation, what is the, the situation right now, but which are the future projects of Forgot and Tom? Hey, it depends on uh, what happened with the old COVID thing, but... Uh, fun to say. Yeah, technically, you know, uh, we were supposed to tour in uh, mm -hmm. during uh, the past year, because we released the new album uh, in uh, May of the past year, but uh, obviously we couldn't tour. So uh, still we we haven't toured uh, behind the new record. So hopefully when it's possible, we'd like to resume the tour that we were uh, booking. Yeah, supposed uh, to do, sure, sure, sure. It explode, uh, exploded and uh, we were also supposed to tour in the US. And it ah, was that's, that's amazing. Actually, we are still confirmed to play at uh, Quebec that fast in Canada. Quebec that fast, yeah, yeah. Uh, this but is huge. We'll see. Yeah, it, it should be cool, but uh, we'll see what happens because uh, we're not sure that we'll be granted the visas and stuff like that. Yes, of course. Uh, for us, we're from Italy. Yeah, sure. So it's not only a matter of uh, 
um, you know, um, uh, solving the the problem in, in Italy. Oh, yeah, in a uh, lot of the world. Worldwide, and for a touring band, it's a big deal because uh, if every country has its own, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, le legislation, uh, you know, about yeah, the, yeah, it's not easy. It gets really complicated to organize a tour, you know. So yes, especially yeah. when a band from Europe goes to the all Amer Americas, it's not easy. Every day, you you have to cross a different border. Uh, so it, it gets really complicated, and but also you can have issues. I don't know yeah. if you heard what, what happened to the to the to the poor decapitated. <laughs> they yeah. were held in custody, and that that were nice because of course it was all fake. But they were there without doing anything, and they are not even from there. So it was like, what the hell? It's crazy. Yeah. Yes, and. Yeah. We we'll probably uh, will try to re-release some old stuff. Yeah. Uh, we have a wide catalog by now. We have got like uh, 10 records, you mm -hmm. know, or stuff like that. Uh, so there's always stuff that needs to be reissued. And yeah. uh, I have a small label and I'm taking back all the original album licenses. Yeah. And probably I'm going to reissue the albums on my own or maybe oh. through with some other licenses. But yeah, we are working on a, on a number of releases. Uh, that's the, you know. yeah. yeah, let me know. I will post it on Poison Rock uh, when the releases will be done. Yeah, sure. And just a message to Italian fans, European fans, and I mean, against the Forgotten Tom fans in general. Well, thanks for supporting Forgotten Tomb in 2020. The reactions to Nihilistic Estrangement were actually above my expectations. Uh, both from the press and from the fans uh, above all and I'm sorry that we couldn't tour and visit your country but keep on supporting the band and hopefully we will be back uh, as soon as possible so what can I say thank you so much and uh, uh, I'm proud to have such a huge band in Italy like that so keep on going like this and keep the our names country ahead thank you so much and uh, let's stay in touch for maybe some drink some beer when all this covid will be done sure i don't care. okay Ten. so thank you so much bye